please everyone. For those of you who I have not met, my name is Christopher Ladd, and I'm the chair of the Guitar and Harp program here at the Hart School, University of Hartford. And if I haven't met you yet, I look forward to meeting you after the show. I'd like to welcome all of you to this celebration. Friends, alum, family, students, those of you watching the live stream, and for those of you who will watch this after. This is the one presentation I never wanted to give, but we're here to celebrate. So you're gonna get a mixture of things, some happy, some sad, and um, it's a chance to remember very fondly the man who brought us all here today, Dick Provo. <clears throat> when I first met him, I had to be 21. I look very different than I do today. I had hair probably down to here. <laughs> I didn't have to wear these. <laughs> um, and anyone who knows me knows I tell this story, so bear with me, but this is for the folks that I haven't met yet. So I'm 21 years old. I heard of this guy, Richard Provo, because he had these books. The art and technique of practice, the art and technique of performance. I had those in college as many of the musicians that are here today did as well. I said, wow, this guy really knows his stuff. I've been practicing better and more than I ever have before. So I go to a Guitar Foundation of America festival and I get to meet him. And I think this was the first time I'd ever had a professional musician when I went up and I said, Professor Provo, my name is Chris. Call me Dick. That phrase, I think, resonated every time someone met him. Whether it was Dr. Provo, Mr. Provo, Professor Provo, didn't matter. Call me Dick. I said, well, I'm looking at doing some graduate work, and I'd love to have a lesson with you. And he said, well, great. Why don't you come up to the hotel room at some point, and, uh, and you can play for me. So now it's on. <laughs> now I'm starting to freak out a little bit, because this is the guy who wrote those books. So I summon all my courage and my strength, and I go up to a hotel room. I can't remember, I think we were in St. Louis at the GFA there. And uh, so I go up, he opens the door, and he goes, hey, come on in. So I sit down, and he's sitting across the, the coffee table from me. Why don't you play something? So I did. I probably should have played something a little simpler, but. I was working on the Usher Waltz by Nikita Koshkin, so that's what I played. However it went. Thankfully, that was so long ago, I don't really remember. But what I do remember is this. <laughs> so I finished playing. And it's just about this quiet. And he goes, how old were you when you started? I said, I, I don't know. Like, maybe not so forte. He slams his hand down on his coffee table and goes, no, you're either pregnant or you're not. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? He goes, you're either mezzo forte or you're forte. You're not kind of mezzo forte. You're not feeling a little mezzo forte today. You got to choose. You got to make a decision, son. And I went, whoa, man. I've never had anybody be that clear with me. And I thought he was gonna break that coffee table, so there was a little bit of like, wow. <laughs> but uh, at that moment, I knew that I had to study with this guy. So <clears throat> I auditioned at the Hart School, and I'm not gonna give you the last 27 years, don't worry. Decide I get in, decide to come. It's the only audition I took. It's the only person I wanted to study with. Moved my then girlfriend who became fiance, became wife, became mother of my two children, up here from Virginia, and thus began the, the relationship. Um, I had the pleasure of working with him for a little over 20 years. And I have never had a relationship quite like that in my life. We all know him as a brother or a father or a grandfather, a great-grandfather? 
mentor, colleague. Um, the joke for me was I always called him my Obi Wan. You know, that was no, I wasn't Luke. I was Anakin. I it, it wasn't going to work out well for me. But um, when we started working together, it was like the lessons didn't stop. Every time we had dinner, every time we were out, and I'm sure many of you can echo the same sentiment, the learning never stopped. And the one thing that as a common thread through this whole evening is his love for beauty, whether that was beautiful music, beautiful guitar playing, beautiful theater, beautiful photography, it was beauty, and hopefully that is what we all have a chance to share here tonight. Um, there are a lot of thanks I, I'd like to give, uh, first and foremost, to all of you for coming and watching uh, on the live stream. I want to thank all the performers uh, who are sharing their, their music and their love for Dick Brogo here. Uh, I want to thank Tom Fatera and Leif Ellis for making all of this possible his crew that's doing the stream right now. I want to thank the 60 plus years of students who have continued to support the guitar program and share your experiences with us as we are one of, if not the oldest guitar performance program in the country, still going strong. That's about all I have for you this evening. I had to make myself a promise that I wasn't going to lose it in front of you all, at least right now, maybe later. Uh, but I'd like to introduce Neil Humphreys and Eric Hansen, who are going to perform for you. And please enjoy the rest of the evening. And um, I look forward to meeting you afterwards. Thanks. Diamond, like metal wrists from the 80s, and oh, here's 
some, here's some Pantera, and it was, it was always pretty interesting. Um, but I think what was really, really neat about that, um, the amount of time that they spent on their instruments, and then to come together and spend more time, um, and I attribute that to inspiration. And I really think that's what uh, they had done for these students that I got to observe. Um, and it was really interesting for me, you know, inspiration, uh, as opposed to, well, I, you know, you'll have to ask Chris, maybe a little bit of intimidation, and that's why they had to put all those hours in. But, um, you know, but to be inspired to put in your time and then not push your instrument down. Um, last little thing I want to say about the piece we're going to play, uh, it's a beautiful piece um, by a French Baroque composer uh, by the name of Marie Marais. The piece is called Les Bois Humaines, um, which is uh, simply titled uh, Human Voices. And what's really interesting about this piece is it's sort of an introspective piece. There's not much written about the piece, uh, but it is a wonderful piece that allows an audience, a performer, to just kind of sit and think and interpret. And what was interesting about this piece is that the person that introduced me to it must have been about 20, maybe 22 years ago now, maybe 20 years, um, was my roommate, Luke Conner. Uh, thank you, Luke, if you're watching. Um, and it was a pretty funny story because we were living uh, just down the road on South Living. I think this was during our uh, master's study years. And he came back from the campus and was like, Neil, dude, dude, you know, Luke was from Philadelphia and had this, you know, just sort of like great presence. Like, dude, dude, you gotta listen to this. And he plays me this piece, and it's absolutely remarkable to me. Just keep in mind, I was a cellist at the time, right? So, um, this piece for, for Viola da Gamba, I was like, wow, that's so beautiful. And when I finished up, we just uh, kind of sat there, and he said, you know, I think he said something like, 50 cents. That CD cost me 50 cents from the library sale. Isn't that great? She's like, absolutely. So um, it's thanks to uh, thanks to my good uh, friend Luke Homer um, that we present this piece for you, um, Marie's Live Walking Man.
share the lessons you learned from my father with people in your lives so that his talents will be shared with others and his legacy will live on. I too would like to extend a special thank you to Chris Ladd, Leif Ellis, Dave McClellan, all of the performers today, and everyone that had a part in preparing this program and, and all of the effort that went into making this, this happen for all of us. Thank you to each of you for being here tonight and for your part in making my father's dash so meaningful. I hope you all have a good night. Thanks.
Good evening, everyone. I also would like to thank you all for being here to honor and celebrate the life of Richard Provo, teacher, performer, noted founder of the Heart School Guitar Program, a renowned and long-standing program in the U.S. I am grateful to Christopher Ladd, to Dean Merrill, and to Dick's family for allowing me to be able to speak here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about my relationship with Dick, um, because what because I had many relationships with Dick and I was very happy to be a student of his. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, more about helping to protect what he created here. Um, and that's very important. So um, as you can see in the program, my name is Dave McClellan. Um, I know some of you, um, and many of you don't know me, so I would like to um, help you understand my many relationships with the Hart School. I graduated from the school in 1976 with a Bachelor of Music and Guitar. Uh, that, I believe, was one year after the birth of Christopher Ladd, who now runs the program. <laughs> um, I am an old guy. I was a sophomore transfer in 1973, and in fact, I auditioned during the year that Dick was trading faculty ships with Gordon Krosky in England, so he wasn't even here when I auditioned. I walked into the audition room expecting to meet the already well-known uh, Richard Provost, which is how I thought the name was pronounced, but I walked in and, and met Gordon Krosky and Alan Spreesterspach, um, whom I also didn't know. Um, all I knew was this, this well-known guy named Dick Provost. Um, so anyway, I completed my degree in 1976 and then joined the faculty where I served um, for three years, from 1976 to 79. So I have, I'm an alumnus, former faculty. Um, I kind of lost contact with the school and with Dick for about 20 years. So in 1996, after feeling serious pangs of guilt about not supporting the program, I uh, provided the initial funding for what is now called the McLellan Endowment for the Guitar Program. The actual formal name is quite a mouthful. Um, it is the David S. and Margaret McLellan Endowment for Guitar. So we can just say, um, we can just use the short, shortened version of the McClellan Endowment. David S. is my dad, that's not me. Um, the, uh, I gave, I provided that initial funding during the intermission of one of Dick's faculty recitals in Wild Auditorium across the way. And um, Alan Spreesterspach actually was the chair of the program that year, so I handed him the, the check uh, for the, the seed money for this McClellan Endowment. Um, Alan, in his sort of sardonic way, um, made the crack that this amount beat the amount that was donated by two other Hart alumni for a composition competition a couple of years earlier. So he, he, uh, it, he made me feel like, oh, this is a little bit of one-upmanship over Neil Anderson class of 1974 and Kevin Tolling class in 1976. But um, I, Alan was as uh, priceless in his approach. <clears throat> so um, the, the endowment uh, I created to honor my own parents, David S. and Margaret. Uh, my mother was a musician and um, and she was also a pathological philanthropist who just couldn't say no to anyone. And uh, when they were asked, when she was asked for support, so I got that disease from her. Um, my my father was a scientist, an MIT ed educated metallurgist, and incidentally, he was part of the design team that designed the aluminum cans that now you now drink soda out of. Um, 
He was interested in everything and was a devout agnostic. So my parents were, uh, supported me a lot. Um, they were pretty worried about studying concert classical guitar, but they were much happier hearing Bach and Brower than they were hearing Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. So uh, they were, they were, they rested easy that I was at least playing some classical music. So uh, that was the, the founding of the endowment in 1996. Um, I also, as part of my pathology, donated two concert guitars who are, can now be used by um, students in the program who don't have a good professional concert guitar. <clears throat> um, my own daughter, Allison, came here in Cho's Heart as her undergraduate school and graduated in 2011 with a Bachelor of Music Education. She was here when John and Lily Feyerabend were here, so I feel even that much more connection to her through the music education department and through her, her happiness being here and continued happiness as an as a elementary music teacher. In 2015, I joined the Hart School Board of Trustees. <clears throat> and created the Heart at Home Audience Development Program that I curated for six seasons. And uh, we, we took students, faculty, staff, and alumni out to homes of, um, homes of people who would volunteer to create audiences. And even though it was a ton of work, it was one of the most rewarding experiences, organizational experiences I've had ever. Um, and I feel very honored to have been able to do that. <clears throat> so, as you can see from this list, I have a lot of connections with the Hart School. And I was so touched and honored to be invited to allow the McClellan Endowment to be the, the sink for um, donations in Dick's memory. Um, <clears throat> So the funds that go into the McClellan Endowment in Dick's memory will be uh, used to help incoming students with scholarships. The endowment's original mission was to help teach students how to be, um, how to be not just perfect performers, but also good communicators, how to connect with an audience, how to give the audience the gift of context and, and to be able to communicate with an audience and, and to do that with compassion and generosity. That was the original intent of the endowment. Um, it still does serve that purpose, but it also is used to help students in the program in various ways. Um, we cover, for example, fees for uh, in-house master classes given by such masters as Scott Tennant, Andy York, and Tigani Goni, and Maestro Leo Brower. We also um, fund technology purchases, for example, a video camera that has been used to, to record concerts for continuous, rapid improvement for the students. And we've also provided funding for students to go represent Hart at various festivals if, if they couldn't cover the travel costs themselves. And so now I encourage you to honor Dick Provo's memory by donating to the endowment. In your program, you'll find a description of the, of the endowment, and you'll find a QR code on the back um, that is a direct link to the endowment page. You don't have to go to the university page and then request the file of the endowment. You can go right to that page. Um, and the family has requested donations in Dick's memory through that vehicle. Um, so there's a QR code in the back that will take you right to the page. Um, when you visit there and want to make a donation, be sure to go down and pick the in memory of and put Richard Provost's name in there. And I would also like to announce that I will personally match uh, the first $2,500 that are donated to the endowment um, in Dick's name. Actually, I'll match any dollar whether it's in Dick's name or not, but I encourage you to, to donate in, in memory of, of Dick. <clears throat> um, 
And I join Dick's family, Renee, Tommy, Michelle, and Michael, and urge you to help uh, dedicate and remember him in this special way. Um, I mentioned that my father was a devout agnostic, and I got that disease from him too, and so I don't offer prayers to the family, because that feels, that feels not right to me, but my prayer to the family and all of you who feel a loss um, by the passing of Dick Provo, my prayer to you is may the force be with you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Peter Clementi, and I'm sorry I couldn't be with you this evening, but I wanted to send this video along describing some of my experiences as a student of Richard Crowe. And for me, my connection with Dick goes all the way back to high school. I attended a master class one summer that Oscar Gillia was giving, and I met Dick there, and right away, I found him to be the warmest, most engaging, and inspiring teacher. And that was really hard to find at that time. There were a few teachers available for classes of guitarists on his level, and even fewer programs available at the college level comparable to what he created in the art school. So I felt so lucky to have discovered him. I applied for admission the following year, and my undergrad experience was absolutely wonderful. And he taught me so much about guitar technique, music, history, the career of music. And he really taught me, at that time, what it really meant to be a professional musician on the deepest level. I came to appreciate that more and more over time. And through the years, he became the best mentor ever for me. I, I you know I can probably speak for many of you as well in this regard. I mean, he provided advice on almost every topic you can, you can imagine. And he was always there for you with a great story, many times to amplify what he was trying to say. Uh, these stories were so engaging, they often involved famous musicians. And I realized later on, even when I went back for graduate study later, how rare it was to find someone who had such knowledge about so many diverse topics, many not even related to the guitar. Um, and it was so rare to find it. But I also realized how equally rare it was to find someone who was so willing to give it all away uh, to me and to so many others for 60 years. So at this time, I would just like to express my gratitude for being able to say that I had Dick Provo as a mentor for so many years and learned so much beyond, really beyond words. And how honored I am at this time to be able to teach at the Hart School alongside Chris Ladd in the program that he created so many years ago. For these things, I will always be so deeply grateful beyond words. Thank you. Hello, I'm Randall Swally. Recently retired senior lecturer in music uh, from Messiah University in central Pennsylvania. A uh, tribute here to Dick Crow. Uh, Dick was very helpful to me in my career, encouraging, supportive, with beneficial advice, and personally introducing me to nationally recognized uh, guitarists. Dick had magnificent ideas, I think about how to make efficient use of practice time. His books, uh, The Art and Technique of Practice and The Art and Technique of Performance, well, they hold wonderful suggestions for student players and important reminders for advanced players. Uh, I always recommended them to my students. Uh, Dick was one of the best music educators, performance coaches that I've ever encountered. It was a tremendous blessing to me to be mentored and the world has uh, lost truly humble and selfless individual. Uh, Dick came to Messiah University where I was teaching uh, to present a master class and concert in which he and I played a duet, and it was just a delightful experience. 
So many of us will miss him very much. He was a wonderful and remarkable individual. I was very blessed to have him uh, as a teacher, uh, as a mentor, as an advisor. So, thank you, Dick Provo, and we will miss you. My dearest teachers, a brilliant, and a sparkling polka for one of the most brilliant, funny, and sparkling friends I have you. Okay. <laughs> 
friends, Dick and Renee Provos. Um, I've known them both for many decades, and I can't even remember the first time that Dick and I met. We've, we've had so many times together at different states, different festivals over the last many, many years, and I have wonderful memories of our friendship and always will. And uh, I love you both, Dick and Renee. I'd like to share with you a few photos that we found, Danny and I. Uh, I'm sure there's many more if I can only find them, but who knows what box they might be in from the old days before there were cell phones. But here's a few we'd like to share with you, and I'll improvise a bit uh, as you see them. <laughs> idea it was to put me right after that. <laughs> that was not good. Um, I would just first of all um, reiterate again what um, uh, everybody has been saying and that's thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for, so much for listening, for streaming. And I've read some, some things that I was very thankful for tonight. Um, but before I do that, I, I also want to really thank the children of our blended marriage. Um, they came with Michael and Shelly and Tommy, and I came with Allison and Emily. And I don't know how it happened. I hope we did a good job. But these now adults work well, so well together. They have such great relationships. And I really want to honor what you all did for Dick's final days. Um, Shelly and Michael and Tommy were there constantly caring for Dick. I was so appreciative. Um, my girls who was in North Carolina came back and forth multiple times to make sure that their children and their husbands were able to spend some time with Dick before um, he really couldn't do too much with us. And I'm so appreciative of all you've done. Um, what a great, great family. So, and I know he was so proud of that as well. For as much as he was proud of his music and his photography, I, I am able to say to you, he was more proud of all of you. And you really were what made his life tick. 
Um, I also brought tonight just two of the letters that I've received. It really touched me. People who couldn't be here, but I wanted to share with you what they were saying, because I think they described it so well. This first letter is from Larry Allen Smith and his wife, Marguerite. Um, and he said to me, Dear Renee, Marguerite and I were so sad to hear the news of Dick's passing, and we want to send our deepest sympathy to you. He was an honor for me to work with Dick for so many years. He was a friend and a trusted colleague, and I knew I could always count on him regardless of the situation or the topic. I think that's a theme that keeps getting repeated over and over. Even after his retirement, I enjoyed seeing him at a variety of events, including the ongoing Heart Alumni of the Year deliberations. <laughs> the events surrounding the 2019 visit of Leo Brower honored Dick and his contributions to Heart as much as they honored Leo. And as a new professor emeritus, I was really looking forward to seeing Dick at the regular Emeritus Association gatherings. Dick was a major figure in the history of the school, and his contributions to music would continue to this day through his many accomplishments as well as the accomplishments of his students. I wanted you to know that unfortunately, Marguerite and I will be out of town or out of country on August 20th, and we are so sorry that we will not be able to attend the celebration of Dick's life. We will be thinking of you and sending our love warmly, Mary. And another uh, note that I received was from um, John. Uh, she said, Dear Renee, and this is so John, <laughs> I was deeply saddened by the shocking news of the passing of your darling Dick. I adored him greatly as an artist and as a teacher, and I very much enjoyed his warmth and great humor. I was most proud to be his colleague and honored to know him. He leaves an enormous, rich heritage, and I regret that I will be out of state on August 20th, and that I am unable to attend his celebration of life. I will be thinking of you and holding you in our heart, my heart and will um, have a prayer for your peace and strength and for daily you know, happy memories. All my love, Jelani Morrison. You know, people don't write this kind of a lengthy letter with all this stuff that is in true way. Mary knew Dick so well. I do remember a day when we were here in this auditorium and there was a celebration for Dick and his accomplishments. And Larry came up to me and pulled me over and he said, okay, now watch, he's going to cry here. And I and sure enough, he was right. Because Dick was really a tender soul deep inside. He really did get to him, if he knew how. Um, and Joanna did a, uh, a uh, voice presentation for a uh, video that he and his partner, Alan Goldschild, um, were, was doing. And she added a perfect English accent to it. And it was really, really lovely. Um, and she knew him so well. So anyway, I just wanted to share those with you. I think there's a lot of people out there. So I saw on the video, and there's still many, many people who um, were affected and inspired by Dick. And I'm just so honored for him that they don't even, they, don't, they talk about his accomplishments, but most of them they talk about his friendship. And he really offered that. Really so thank you, thank you, everybody, and thank you to our kids who are just wonderful examples of humans. Thank you so much.
So uh, I'm Anton Miller, uh, professor of violin here, and 17 years ago I came to Hart and I knew almost nobody, and one of the first people that I met was Dick, and as everybody says, you know, the first thing he said to me is, oh, call me Dick. And um, I, you know, I knew right away when I met him, it's very unusual for me, but I, I knew right away that um, he would be a lifelong friend. Um, and what I didn't know was that we would be musical collaborators also. And Rita and I had the great fortune of being able to play in our Phoenix trio, violin, viola, and guitar. And we played some concerts and had a, had a wonderful time and made some beautiful music and just had, had a great time with Dick. Um, I, I, what we're playing uh, today are two pieces that we played with Dick in, in our concerts, um, two movements. And the first one is just a really, really beautiful Paganini movement. And the second one we're ending with, um, and I think it's sort of is very uh, fitting that we're ending with it because it's a polaka that has sort of a funny ending. So it's uh, right up Dick's alley, I think. So this is uh, Paganini and, and uh, Beethoven. I wasn't planning on speaking, but since Renee's up on stage with us, I just wanted to mention one of the best parts about our relationship with Dick and Renee, two things. One is that Renee was the first person to tell us to get married. So, <laughs> thank you. She, she pulled me aside and said, you gotta get her a ring. <laughs> <laughs> and the other was that, you know, of course, you know, our relationship was, was very much not only involved in play and music and friendship, but food. So I'll see you tomorrow, I'm through this. <laughs>